Typically on this night, we have a few young people that may be um, experiencing taking in the meal, Holy Communion, for the first time. I'm a little different from my background, came from a, a pastor who, well, he didn't have an age requirement, he didn't have a bar in which to receive communion. No, he taught us that that was a conversation to have in the home. We were to learn from our parents what it meant to, to eat of this meal, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior. And I was blessed with a man of faith, my father, who took that charge very seriously. On this night, now we no longer take attendance and, and have the pastor say, you have met the qualifications. This pastor says, do you want to grow in your journey with Christ? I'm not going to stand in your way. Because I think that's what we all are longing for, is to get out of the way of what God is longing for us to experience forgiveness and grace in a world that seems, again, very angry in the last few days. We see this world as what is going on, and I remind you our message tonight on which the Lord shared of himself on the night in which he was betrayed and forever there was a deal changer. We have retold this story for 2,000 years. God's been in violence, upheaval, dissatisfaction, the winter blues, the grumps, the grumbles. God's been here before. In our passage, something that really hit me this evening is I heard it again and again, and it's been with me all week long as I have prepared to talk with you tonight. Little children, he said. Sometimes we dismiss that and think, he must be talking to those little children, you know, the ones who are coming to the table for the first time. And I have news for you, he's talking to you and me. The ones who have let life become so important that we may have forgotten who gave of his own life for us. I've been studying this table a lot, too. See, when we move it back and forth, well, it's a little heavy. And tiny and mighty I am, but it's still a little bit much. So it made me wonder, do you all look at it? See, if you were children, what would you do? You would race to it, and you'd want to touch this. You'd want to know more, because you wouldn't be afraid to ask questions, to wonder and say, well, how can this be? Prove it to me. You wouldn't be afraid to long and want more. It made me think of my own dining room table that I grew up on. Can you imagine yours? Where did you eat dinner? Maybe it was breakfast. Where did you most often meet as the family? As a family of nine children, we had that table, you know, that quickly became this size to this size. So it all would fit in. And even though it was really a table for 10, somehow 14, no, put on another card table, right? We were all at the table. My husband and I have the same tradition. All are invited at the table. All surround the table and see that it is good. Have you ever been at a tea party of a child? Not just little girls, little boys and girls. You know when they make believe. Have you ever gone to that table and realized you gotta sit on the little chair, right? As the best seat is saved for the teddy bear and the chosen, the chosen dolls. And my grandchildren put trucks up to the table as well. These are their cherished items. And they don't want them to miss out on this meal because come, come, mom. They call me Nani. Come on, Nani, sit down. Come and be honored at the table, says the little children the little children getting it. 
Understanding first, all are invited. And the best seat, the best seat is for those that often look like toys that we would discard, broken, throwaway kind of toys, and they have the chair of honor. And somehow, whether it be the invisible cookie or the empty teacup supposedly filled with something warm, there's always enough. No one is ever shortchanged at this table. If you do this little um, story with your kids, if you're part of this little journey with them at the table, have you ever tried to do it when they get a little older? Now there's rules. There's the right way to come to the table. Fast forward, have you ever tried to get all your teenagers at the dinner table at any given time? Now you're just grateful if more are there than aren't. Fast forward a little further. When your children are on their own and they no longer come to your table, they're sitting at their own table in their own home. What table are you eating at? Are you eating at a table that is so busy because you don't want to turn off the TV or turn off your cell phone? Have you seen the new way kids go out for dinner? And I say, kids, we're right there, little kids. Little children, put the cell phones, what? Away. Look eye to eye. Listen to one another. The intonation. Little children, Jesus is talking to you and me. <coughs> For the meal is being served. And it deserves our attention. The meal that Christ serves is like no other, the at this table, it is served as Christ has been and will be betrayed. And that's on us. See, we want to pin this on one guy, right? Because it's really a lot nicer to hear this ch story and go, that one, he did it. If I'd known better. Little children, he's talking to you and I. For often when we serve dinner, we have credentials, we have rules, we have the grown-up way to eat, the right way to eat with forks and knives, the right way to serve dinner, the right things to speak. We have already cast out. And when there is someone coming at our table, even this evening in this house, someone walked in the doors because they were left open and was in need of love and compassion. A stranger came in our midst this evening. What if we had said, no, not at our table? You do not belong. Quickly after this individual is with us and we shared a cup of coffee, got him where this individual needed to go and I already missed him. Why? Come, wait, there's more. I wanted to know. Does he know about Christ? Man, he got me in the end. You know that, right? Because I had already summed this guy up. And he goes like this. And a beautiful cross around his neck. No stranger to the love of Christ. Little girl. Be careful how you judge. Boys and girls, little children, we have been invited to the meal for which there is no barrier. All are invited to taste and know that it is good. Can we put the distractions away? Can you come to the table like a, a child, a mom, a grandma and say, Yes, I will sit with you. Can you fix the meal for your teenager and say, I'm glad you're busy, I'm glad you're in life. Can you sit and be grateful that your children are out in the world? Can we put the phones and TVs away? Can we just love one another? See, that's the piece that we don't want to miss. In this act, it's not just having a great night of hospitality. 
He's got a commandment. When their feet were dirty, full of all the muck of this earth, he washed their feet, invited them to have dinner, and reminded them we are to love God and to love one another. Little children, God has taught us how. We struggle with the who, me? Little children, tonight, when you put your hands out, know this is that moment God says, I want you to know I love you and nothing will separate you from your loving God. Taste and no, drink and remember. On this night, all are invited to the table. Come and encounter Christ, children of God.